Using the mean value theorem, we may show the following about functions. Uh, we may relate the derivative of a function, the sign of a derivative of a function, to uh, increasing and decreasing properties of the function. So suppose we have a function defined on an open interval and suppose that f has a positive derivative on all the interval. Then it holds that f is strictly increasing on i. Well, similarly, if we are able to show that the derivative is always negative, now suppose the derivative is negative on the whole interval, then we may conclude that f is strictly decreasing on this interval. Well, let's consider a proof. So, take arbitrary x1 and x2 in the interval, and again we assume, we may assume that x1 x1 is smaller than x2, since we assume that uh, the derivative exists on all of a, b, then we know that f is differentiable on the open interval x1, x2, and it's also continuous on the closed interval x1, x2. And this means that we may apply the mean value theorem on f restricted to the interval x1, x2. So the mean value theorem now states that there is a c in the open interval x1, x2 such that the difference between the function value fx2 and fx1 equals the derivative in this value c times x2 minus x1. Okay, now assume that we know that the derivative is always positive on the interval, open interval AB, then this entails that the derivative in C is larger than zero, so if we consider this difference fx2 minus fx1, well this difference is a product of two positive things, right? So f prime c is positive and x2 minus x1 is positive. And if this is positive then we see that fx2 minus fx1 is positive, so fx2 is larger than fx1. And this means that the function is strictly increasing. Yeah, if x1 is smaller than x2, then fx1 is smaller than fx2. This is just the property of a strictly increasing function. Well, something similar. If the derivative is smaller than 0, then fx2 minus fx1 equals a product of a negative number, which is f prime c times x2 minus x1. Yeah, the first number is smaller than 0, the second number x2 minus x1 is larger than 0, so the product is smaller than 0, so we see that fx2 is smaller than fx1. And this means that the function is strictly decreasing on the interval, since we may vary x1 and x2 and have and yield, and we may yield in this way the general statement.